Hey, what's up everybody? This is your boy Kenny, and this is Star Season 2, Episode 9, and the name of this episode is Climax, and this is the fall finale. Man, Star was lit. I enjoyed this. Look, Lee Daniels, you are doing a phenomenal job with Star. You know, I am been a big fan of this show since Season 1, and... You know, even though this is just halfway through season two, I was literally on the edge of my seat the entire time, and I didn't miss a beat. But um, before I get started, let me first offer my love and condolences to everyone that was affected by the bombing in New York, as well as um, the tragedy in Texas, as well as Las Vegas. Also, everyone that was affected by the Hurricanes, Harvey, um, Jose, and Maria. If you can give any kind of relief or support to any to anybody who was affected by these tragedies, please do so because we definitely need to support one another in times of trouble. Amen to that. But um, let's uh, get started with this review because this episode was mind blowing. Now the episode opens up. We see Maurice and the detective at the hospital, and we see the person that's in the hospital bed. Is Carlotta. Obviously, what ends up happening, she was in a fire and she obviously inhaled a lot of smoke and she passed out. So they pretty much have on oxygen and the detective begins to ask her questions saying that, do you know how you ended up here? Do you know what happened? And then he asks her, you know, tell me everything that happened. Tell me everything that happened within the past few days which led to what happened tonight. So obviously something really big happened where there was a fire, um, Carlotta was affected by it, but then before, and this, but this is pretty much, you know, fact. so then after he mentions that, we start to kind of rewind back of certain events that happened before Carlotta ended in that hospital. In the, in, in, excuse me. And the main people that, that they show that were, you know, affected within the past few days that led to Carlotta being in the hospital were Star, Alex, Simone, and Cotton. All four of them had a crazy situation which led to Carlotta being in the hospital. So that's where we start. Um, the episode opens up, and so I'm sorry, <laughs> forgive me, y'all. Um, but, um, so pretty much that's where we lead to that something, some things took place that led Carlotta in the hospital. So then we actually see like a few days prior, um, we see Star and Simona at, uh, at Carlotta's, um, you know, they're talking about, you know, the showcase because it's about to come up in a few days and if we win, we'll have it all and we'll be able to finally live our dreams and everything and Star is just like yes I have everything I ever wanted you know I have fame I have fortune and I'll have my man because I think it's time for me to tell Noah how I really feel about him and little does Star know he and an all ready and got his sights set on Alex talk about some mess that's about to hit the fan so and then we also see Carlotta and Simone are not on good terms. I mean, Simone is completely blowing off Carlotta. Anytime Carlotta says something, she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you think you know everything, and obviously we just found out that you really don't because you piss test me and I came back negative. So maybe you need to get out. So she's been kind of giving, like, these kind of, like, you know, undertone cracks to Carlotta throughout the whole episode because now that she's with Iyana, and now, I mean, now she's with Iyana, she's really starting to feel herself. But we can definitely tell Simone has definitely been intoxicated because throughout the whole episode, she popping pills. And I'm definitely going to get to her situation, you know, you know, you know, in a minute. But then we pretty much also see in this scene that, you know, Miss Bruce and Carlotta are having a moment. They're talking about, you know, 
you know, you know, helping, because she's now going to be helping Carlotta with her new look. Now that she's managing the group, you know, he's pretty much going to help upstage her image and upstage her appearance. You know, he pulled out the human hair and it was Brazilian. He's saying, yeah, stop these, you know, um, start these, stop these, you know, wig, well, wigs you've been wearing and start investing into the top blade shit because you, you now in high society and you need to look like it. You need to look like you the business, boo-boo. So they having a moment. We're seeing that, you know, Cotton and Alex, you know, you know, are there, and, um, <clears throat> you know, they're all excited about, you know, the impending, you know, um, you know, pretty much, you know, what's coming in pending, but Cotton already, Cotton is in the scene that she needs to go talk to Elliot, that she needs to go talk to Elliot, and Alex is like, I gotta go because I have a rehearsal with, um, Noah, and she's just, you know, giving fabulous, giving, like, you know, like, divaness. Like, it was kind of like the, the the way that Star Wars in season one, we're starting to see that now um, Alex is going through the same thing. You know, she's getting the limelight, and we definitely see it starting to affect her. So, after, you know, Alex leaves, they start turning up in the salon. They start dancing because they're happy. The show gets about to come up. They're optimistic that they're about to change their lives for good, forever and everything. And that things are starting to get better for them. They're making moves. You know, and, you know, everything is about to start popping. But then, while they party and having a good time, they get interrupted, you know, by the police. You know, and also a woman that represents, you know, the Department of Health. And and also the state. And they said that they are there because they have gotten word that there has been an um, been illegal um, surgical, in, in, you know, injections that have been going on, you know, pretty much cosmetic injections. You know, illegal, you know, injections have been going on in this address. We got word of it, so we're doing a thorough investigation, and until this investigation is finished, this business is closed. And we see, because we definitely saw a few episodes ago when Brody came to the salon and he was talking to Ms. Bruce, and he went upstairs to get star stuff, we saw this girl come in asking, like, you know, it's, it's like my butt is not even, you know. Don't, do you think you put in a little too, you know, do you think you, um, you didn't put in enough? Because I want my cheeks even. And he's like, bitch, why the hell are you up in here telling about this? You trying to get us, you trying to get us busted? Girl, this shit's illegal. Look, get your ass back here, I got you. So I'm like, Bruce is a hustler, a true hustler, but he hustles for the people he loves. So here it is, he done put Carlotta's business in jeopardy, but he did it to help her. Because then we get, you know, Noah and so, so then after that we get um, Miss Bruce and Carlotta go back and forth. And you can tell that they have been together since they, they pretty much grew up together. They like family. That's how tight they are. But then Carlotta is mad, like, how the hell could you do this? I put you in charge and you damn near ruined my business. And he said, first of all, sweetie, your business ain't been picking up shit for the longest. You ain't been pulling in no customers. So I decided to do illegal injections to get money on the books. And guess what? You profited off of me doing this. And she's like, but you could have killed somebody. You know, I had no idea about this in regards if you knew about it or not. I was the one up here helping you. But here you are up here acting all grand, fucking that trade nigga that won't give you a dime. I was like, oh, Miss Bruce was not playing. But then Carlotta dropped the gauntlet and was like, you're fired. And he's like, really? Really, Big C? You gonna do that to me? Of all, if anybody, she's, like, she's like, look, I gotta get my business up and running, and in order for me to do that, I gotta let you go. And we see that this really hurt Miss Bruce to her heart because that salon has been a part of her life. Probably since the beginning of it. <clears throat> but she made a bad call, but I can say I stand behind Miss Bruce because she did the call for her people. It wasn't just about her. She was doing those injections to help keep them going. But I'm... <clears throat> So we pretty much, she, she got her stuff, she, and, she, and she says, I'll be back for the rest of my things, and she walked out. And I was just like, damn. 
you know, so this is definitely going to become a story that's definitely going to go on, you know, once the um, spring premiere comes out. So we saw that go on. Then we get a scene with Hyle, Andy, and Angel. Hyle coming over there doing his little manager, doing his little management speech, you know, saying that, you know, yeah, you guys are looking good. You guys are going to do great in the showcase. I'm going to have you guys looking slick. You guys are going to be everything. You guys ain't nobody going to be able to touch you. And we see that um, Angel is feeling some kind of way. Andy, you know, because Andy definitely got a mouth on him. We definitely see that, yeah, Andy is very slick with his mouth. And he's like, man, won't you stop, like, won't you just tell him what you got to say, man, and stop dancing around it? Like, what's up? So he pretty much tells Hyo, um, you're fired. And Hyo's like, what? He's like, you're fired. <laughs> you stole my song. You think I was going to forget that shit? You ain't going to manage me. You're not going to manage nothing. Your ass is fired. We don't need you. We're going on this showcase alone. And we're going to be bigger and better without your ass. And the next thing you know, we see Ayo jack up his damn nephew. He's like, yeah, it hurts, doesn't it? But hey, it is what it is. You know, <laughs> I guess me and you are cut from the same cloth, huh? Yeah, they are. Because at the end of the day, when Ayo was about to do that song with Andy and was going to put Andy on it, Next thing you know, Angel showed up right at, hand, at right at you know, um, at Hyo's camper. So I'm like, yeah, he's just like his uncle. He can be just as shady, and he can pretty much move within the grass just like him. So he pretty much let it be known, yeah. So he's like, man, you ain't gone, man, you, you mother, like, and then Hyo's like, man, you dudes are, you dudes are tripping. I got papers on your asses. Y'all can't do nothing. And... Oh, and then he was like, oh, so where you hear that at, huh? What, when you were sticking it to, to, um, to Ayana? Well, guess what? We talked to Ayana, and Ayana said, that shit don't matter. So now, how your way feels double-crossed, because now his group left him, and the woman that he's been screwing, and has been, you know, and has been, you know, um pitching everything too, she's done turned on him also. So this has made Hyo feel some kind of way and he's saying that hey and then Angel's like, Well hey, that's the way it is, Unc. And then now uh, and then all of a sudden Andy's like, See ya, Unc <laughs> And Andy needs to sit his ass down. But yeah, I was so here for that. Um so now we see Hyo definitely has an agenda now. Then we get a scene with Simone and Karen. Because you remember, the last time we saw Karen, Simone was about to get lip-locking with Angel, and Karen showed up. We see that Simone has been hiding Karen in the studio. We come to find out that Karen did get, um, she got put into a foster home, but she ran away, so now she's homeless. But Simone pretty much is, you know, sneaking her around, you know, pretty much sneaking her in the studio. And then she kind of like confesses her love for Lauren, for Karen and says that, you know, when I make you big and I go on tour, I'm taking you with me. You know, you're never going to be alone as long as I'm with you. And, you know, as a matter, and then they kind of make out and everything. And then she tells her that, you know, we're all going to be at the showcase. So won't you go to um, Carlotta's house, you know, and you can just stay there. So I'm like, interesting. So that's definitely going to be a question mark that's going into the season also. I mean, it's going into the spring, the spring premiere, I mean. Then, we actually get a scene with Alex, Nola, and G with Alex, Noah. They are pretty much rehearsing, and you can definitely tell that the passion and the, and the chemistry between them is getting more and more intense, and it's getting to the point where Alex is getting to the point where she can't fight it. You know, she's still keeping her guard up, but she's losing that battle. And then we see Gigi come up in there, Gigi peeping the chemistry between them. You know, Noah goes off, and her, and uh, so Gigi and um, Alice start talking, you know, because they become, you know, good girlfriends. And Gigi was telling her the real. She's like, girl, 
You saying this a fake relationship? Sure. I'm seeing completely through the cracks. I mean, hey, you know, he's fine as hell. And you guys definitely look good. But then I'm really starting to see that, yeah, the passion is definitely getting intense. And she's like, look, we are just doing this for the show. And after this show, this thing's going to be over. And, I, and you know... I ain't, I ain't, you know, I ain't got nothing to do with no damn Noah. This is all for show. I love my man. And she's like, oh, yeah, the paralyzed boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as far as this whole thing with me, you and Noah, oh, yeah, it's getting hot. And she's like, there's nothing going on between us. And then Gigi was like, hmm, the lies we tell ourselves. And I was like, that shit going to come back to play later. So I'm, I'm going to get there. Let's keep it moving. So, we actually see that Cotton, you know, after she leaves the salon, you know, she goes to the, um, the, the construction site to find Elliot. Because remember, the last episode, you know, her and Elliot were out together and they got cornered by Omari. And finally, Elliot found, finds out about her and Omari's, you know, fling. And, of course, you know, Ellie was upset with anything. His ass shouldn't have got upset because, in all honesty, if it weren't for you getting her locked up, she would have never met Omari in the first place. Just saying. But she goes to the construction site saying that, baby, I know you're upset with me, but I really want to talk to you, and I know you're here because I saw your car. Next thing you know, she goes into the room, and she sees Elliot is laid out, and he is bloody from head to toe. Somebody fucked him up. And she immediately breaks down. She calls 911, and, and um, they rush him to the hospital. We see that Carlotta comes. And I'm, I'm pretty much going to tie everything with Cotton up right here and there. Because Cotton gave me life this episode. Because, and, th and so pretty much um, after that, um, Cotton's at the hospital. Carlotta comes there, you know, because she knows how much, you know, Elliot meant to her. And she's like, I can't believe someone would do this to Elliot. Like, who would do this? Like, I don't know who could have done this to him. And Carlotta's like, you know good and damn well who did this. You know exactly who was behind it. And then the next thing you know, we see a little clip. We see Omari's old crazed ass who got a hoodie on, and he high and listening to everything. So we see that, um, that Cotton is there. You know, that she's seeing the doctors work to save um, Elliot, and Elliot dies. And the nurse tells her she's sorry, and she breaks down. Because now we realize the person that she really loved was Elliot. Omari was just something to pass the time, but Omari actually caught more feelings and has become crazy and deranged because of this energy that he feels for Cotton. So Cotton is just done. She's broken. She's just, you know, her, her heart literally just dropped out of her chest because she just lost the love of her life. So we see she's walking down the, the hall in the hospital crying her eyes out. Next thing you know, we see this hand come up and drags her into one of the closets and it's Omari with his crazy ass. And he's like, don't, he's like, you better not scream. So next thing you know, um, Cotton is like, oh my God. It's true what everybody said about you. And he's like, and, he, and, um, and then she, he was like, yeah. And you promised that we would, you know, that we would um, be together outside those walls. And I'm not giving you up without a fight. And she's like, my God, you killed Elliot. Do you actually think that by doing this, is going to make me want you more? And he says, I'll do whatever it takes. You're not getting rid of me, Cotton. And if it gets to the point where I got to kill you, so be it. Cotton, after all that she's been through and all the crazy shit this dude has pulled, Cotton bossed herself up and was like, do what you got to do because I have nothing left. She pushed him off and was like, get the hell out of my way, punk-ass bitch. I was like, Cotton, yes! 
I was team Cotton in that moment. I'm like, yes, Cotton. Yeah, Cotton will get in that ass. Because we, we know Cotton ain't no punk. Cotton will, will scrap. And she let it be known. You don't scare me, bruh. So, if you ain't going, if you going, if you feeling froggy, leap. Next time we see Cotton, Cotton's in the bathtub. She's looking gorgeous because, you know, Cotton's beautiful. Um, and, Amaya, and Amaya Scott, honey, let me tell you, you are doing a phenomenal job. You are a, you are a monumental talent, and I love you in this role. But she is in the tub, you know, and the next thing you know, we kind of get a scene from Fatal Attraction. She starts getting choked. Somebody's choking her underwater, and we see it's Amari's ass. Amari then choked her out to the point that she stopped breathing. The question is, did she survive? So that is one element that happened that led to Carlotta being in the hospital. Well, one of the events that happened before that. So we got that going on. Then we then I'm about to tie this scene up, you know, involving Hyo, Charles, and Iyana. Now, after he had that whole situation um, with um, when you know and with um, with um, Angel and Andy telling them that they fired them. He actually goes to fight to meet with um, Iyana and pretty much confront her like, "What the hell is going on? I thought we had a deal. I thought you had my back. Why the hell did you just allow this to happen?" And she pretty much in a way just blows him off. And kind of just was like, look, I can't deal with this right now. This showcase is more than everything, and this is more important than you, so you need to leave. And I was like, I ain't going nowhere. You're going to fix this, and you don't get to the bottom of it. And then all of a sudden, her father's like, excuse me, what the heck you got going on when you let people just talk to you any kind of way? And he said, leave now, young man. And Hyo kind of looked, and he walked up out of there. Because, you know, before that happened, you know, both, um, you know, Iyana and her father were talking about this whole situation with the showcase. She's saying the showcase is going to be a success, and he says, I hope it is. She says, it will be. Because, you know, because, um, cause, you know, if it is, you know, then, you know, I get to take, you know, Midtown to the next level. And he says, yes, and if you fail, I'm selling it. So, we'll see what it is when it happens because he literally has no faith in her but then in this moment he does tell her that <clears throat> when he kind of stepped in and got you know Hyo out the room he was saying that look I don't agree with all your decisions but one thing I am to you is loyal you're my blood so I'm loyal to you no matter how much I may you know beat you down or how much I may dis disagree with you I will always be loyal to you because loyalty is family. Okay. So then, late in the next time we see Hyle, you know, Hyle had kind of gotten to it with, um, you know, with, um, you know, Carlotta because he's in his feelings, you know, and, you know, you know, about, you know, the fact that the guys fired him, and he's like, well, you got papers on him, right? And he's like, yeah, I got papers. And he's like, okay, fine, you don't got nothing to worry about. And he's like, I can't believe these guys would do this. You know, he, and she says that, what you hell you mean why you think they wouldn't do this? You always doing something shady. You've been doing this for the longest, and you still haven't learned. You still keep doing the same old shit, and then you're mad that it blows up in your face. Like, really, you need a reality check. And he's like, how can you talk to me like that? You know what I'm saying? You know, I made those boys. And she's like, oh, yeah, just like, just like you made me and Mary, right? And he's just like, you can just be so cruel, Carlotta. Because that really hit him hard that since the end of the time, you've just been messy as hell. And you didn't want to be in your feelings because shit's blowing up in your face. Because she's like, oh, you messing around with your little damn girlfriend and you still ain't got no pool? You always, well, you always just, you know, wasting yourself for very little. So they kind of had that dispute. But then after that, Hyo was in his feelings. He's doing lines of cocaine. And he's just spazzing out. And next thing you know, he, he starts rumbling through things. I don't know if um, if he was at Midtown or was he in Carlotta's house, but 
you know that information that Carlotta had got that can that, that um could um destroy Iana while going through and I think it either was at either you know at the A and R desk at Midtown or then he was at Carlotta's house, but he found those documents and once he saw that he's like, oh okay, he took pictures and immediately that hustle came out and he called up you know her father Charles um. I got something for you. Next thing you know, we see that Iyala takes this, because pretty much we got the showcase. Andy and, um, you know, Andy and um, Angel perform. You know, K3 performs. I'm going to get into their performance. And then, you know, before, you know, the grand, you know, finale, which is Alex and, um, and uh, Noah doing the song So Sick. Iyala is out there talking to the audience saying that this label is going to be a success and it's all due to you because you get to choose who you want to be the leading artist on this label. It's all up to you to make the choice. It's all in your hands. And pretty much, um, so pretty much, you know, after the whole show is over, Iyala goes back there thinking she's going to get embraced by her father. Her father got guards blocking her, and he walks away, and she's, Dad, 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 what is this? Dad! The father pretty much says that, what the hell did I tell you about loyalty? What the hell is this? He pulls it up, and it comes to find out the guy who ruined his career, made him lose his top artist, let him, he wanted the, the label that he built from the ground up, how this label got ripped away from him was from this guy who he thought was a business um, affiliate and a business business associate, but he robbed him, and then he actually see that he got proof that him and Ayana was messing around with each other. So the father is pissed. He's like, I have always been in your corner. I've always been loyal to you, and this is disloyalty. You literally was sleeping with the man who destroyed my who destroyed my my industry, who pretty much destroyed the company that I built, who made me lose some of my biggest artists. I lost my best artist because of this asshole. And come to find out, you was in you were kind of cahootling with them the whole time. He was like, "No, this is done," because. At the end of the day, I told you, loyalty is family. And since you're not loyal, you are no longer the head of Midtown, and you are no longer my daughter. I was like, and then he walked away. The guards stood there, folded their arms in front of her. She started to break down like a little girl, and I'm like, that's what you get, you rotten old bitch. Because she has been evil from the moment we met her in the beginning of this season. She has been shady, she has been conniving, she has been, you know, treacherous, manipulative, you know, um, you know, mean, spiteful. She's been every negative commentary you can think of. She has displayed throughout this whole time and it was good to see that rotten that rotten trifling bitch get her just due. So here it is, you did all this crap for this label. Come to find out the label wasn't yours anyway. Your daddy gave it to you. But your daddy still called the shots. And then, all of a sudden, when your truth comes out, because that was the truth that Carlotta was going to expose about her ass. But she chose not to after her and Maurice talked. But Hyle got his hands on it. Now, Hyle is the type of person that will use some ammunition to take you down. And that's exactly what he did. <laughs> and I was like, Iyana was done. You can put a you can put a fork in her ass. She was well done. <laughs> Straight up. Um Also, we get a scene with no with no one in Star. Star's trying to confess her feelings for him, but they actually collaborate and she even gives a good idea to, you know, the to the actual duet, you know, that he's doing with Alex. 
So we actually see that Star is still a part of this, but he's saying that, you know, it's great that we can still be friends like this. So he already has got his sights on getting Alex, even though Alex is still with Derek, but I'm going to get to that too. And, you know, when she's about to really tell him how she felt, that's when Alex came in there and eventually Star left because she obviously started to see the chemistry between um, Alex and Noah is becoming more and more noticeable. Because we saw Gigi clocked it, and now we know Stardom clocked it too. Now, let me give a shout out to my boy James Caldwell, because James Caldwell called this out in one of his reviews, and I have to say it here, this whole situation, this whole love triangle, is really history repeating itself because we saw this same situation with Carlotta, Mary, and Hyle. Hyle caught between two best friends, and now Noah is caught between two best friends and pretty much is getting his way, you know, on both ends. So we already see this is going to explode down the line. So then we pretty much see that, you know, Star and Simone are about to, you know, they're pretty much about to go on, you know, to perform. And, you know, Simone asks, did you tell him? And she's like, well, I was going to, but I didn't. And next thing you know, she's about to reveal some more. But then Alice came in, you know, they pretty much kind of rehearsed and get themselves together, you know, for the performance. And those red bodysuits, you know, with them red heels, their look was so sexy. And they hit it tonight. Um, we see that they're ready and now and then Carlotta comes in you know Simone is still getting shade but she says that look I only gave you that piss that's because I love you and I care about you but I'm glad that you weren't on drugs but look this is about you guys winning the night so let that go do not be feeding on that get out here and y'all need to kill it so so we pretty much see they're doing the performance. So pretty much before they start to perform, we actually get, you know, we actually see Derek comes to, um, actually comes to the show and say that he didn't want to miss the showcase, you know, and he brought us some, he brought um, Alex some flowers and he said that, you know, I'm happy, you know, for you and I know things have been tough, but I, I, I know we can make this work. And she says that, look, after this whole show, it's going to be no more me and Noah. It's not going to be no more of this fake publicity about us being a couple. I'm done with it. It's going to be about me and you. So I was like, okay. Interesting. So we see that going on. So we pretty much see, you know, Take 3 performs. They got the song Imagination. They wear these red body suits and they are giving pretty much Valentine's sexy and just pure passion and an erotica and they are giving it and while they're performing they're hitting every mark and then all of a sudden Simone has a reaction to them pills she's been taking because I said she's been taking them throughout the whole episode so she pretty much is starts shaking on stage and starts slurring her words and everything but they're able to get through the performance but Carlotta you know, Maurice, even the girls on stage notice that some Simone is on something and something ain't right. So after that performance and everything, um, you know, Star goes after Simone because Carlotta's are going out there. But then, you know, Star's like, "Look, she don't want to talk to you right now, um, Miss Carlotta. Let me handle it." She goes and pretty much. You know, and, and pretty much when they actually confront her backstage, they go in her purse and they actually see that she got all these prescriptions and they're all in Iyama's name. So, Star is hot. So, after that, you know, they put, I mean, um, Simone runs off and that's when Star says, let me go after her. She tries to go after Simone and Simone is like, I need those pills. They're helping me. And 
She says, these damn pills are not helping you. They are, they're going to kill you. And Iyana is giving you these things because she wants to control you. And she's like, no, she cares about me. She's like, no, she does not care about you. She never cared about you. And she threw the pills, you know, over the building. And, you know, Simone is like literally panicking because she is one junkie ass. And then next, you know, she starts saying, so that's what it is. I ruin everything, right? Don't I? I always ruin everything. Well, yeah, you did ruin that performance because your ass was so fucking high. And you've been taking these pills like, like they M&M's. You know, and it's just like, man, Simone has really hit rock bottom. And this upsets the hell out of Star. She next, you know, runs into Carlotta again. You know, Carlotta's like, look, I'm going to go find Simone. And she's like, and, but she, and then she's like, okay, fine. You know, because Star's like, I'm going to go visit somebody else. So we see Carlotta goes to try to find Simone. Star goes off to find Miss Iyana. In the meantime, Alex still has to perform with Noah. With um, but before she leaves, she watch um, Star watches the performance from backstage, and Derek is in the audience. They are performing a song. Oh yes, and Gigi, I forgot. I don't want to forget about my girl Gigi. Gigi is actually hosting the showcase. Gigi actually meets Derek backstage, and she was like, "Ooh, girl, you he is fine." She's like. I understand now why you don't want to let him go, girl. Like, ooh. And then she went behind and was like, I was like, Gigi, you a mess. She's like, girl, get your ass out of here. And she's like, mm, he is fine, girl. Ooh, he is sexy. I was like, mm-hmm. She wasn't talking about Noah no more. She's like, now nah, I see why you want to be with your man. Like, he is gorgeous. I was like, see, that was cute. But then that performance, Noah and Alex show so much passion, so much, you know, depth. And they were killing that song so sick. And they literally had black Twitter going crazy during that performance. And then when it came towards the end, he pulled her in and kissed her. Star saw it backstage and... Damn, Derek sitting right there and saw them kiss, and Alex kissed him back. So we're seeing that, yes, the passion between the two of them is definitely heating up. And the funny thing about it, before we saw them kiss, we looked um, at Derek, Derek's leg move. So that lets us know he's only temporary paralyzed. He is going to be able to walk again. So he's happy that he moved his leg at that moment. So now he knows that, you know, him and Alex are going to, you know, rebuild their relationship together. And he just found out that, you know, in time he's going to be able to walk again. He's only temporarily paralyzed because he finally felt something in his legs. And for him to see his girl kiss Noah on stage. So, that went down. But then after that damn performance, uh, <laughs> Alex went behind, went, you know, they went, um, you know, they pretty much went backstage. Damn, Noah's like, yeah, that club, that performance was hot, right? She slapped the black off of Noah. And she said, I told you never to kiss me again. And you did this while my boyfriend was out in the audience. He says that, yo, hold up, hold up. First of all, you're going to stop blaming me for everything. You're going to stop trying to say it's all just me. Look, you kiss me back. I ain't make you kiss me. You kiss me just as, quick, just as much as I kissed you. It ain't just me. Next thing you know, we see Alice takes off that coat, and she jumps off, and we see, you know, she's serving red heels at high noon. They point it up like, bing, and she is getting her life. Her and Noah are tonguing each other down. She's got, she's struggling. She's literally got her legs 
wrapped around Noah, and she is getting, getting her life. They are literally licking each other down, and it is going in. And the next thing you know, we see that wheelchair come around, and Derek see them really getting it on. And then by the time she's, like, all into it, then she's like, no, 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 we can't do this. But it's too late, bitch, because Derek saw you. And then Derek was like, find you somewhere else to sleep tonight. And that's all he had to say. He was broken. And then she's like, oh, Derek, oh, Derek. I'm like, that's what you get for lying, dumbass. Because he told you, if you want to end this, at least have enough respect for me to tell me to my face. And he walked in seeing you straddling up on Noah. I mean, we kind of saw this coming, though. But boo-boo. You didn't handle your business. If anything, you tried to be slick, and your ass, and the shit blew up in your face. So you did, you got what you deserved, Alex. And we're gonna see how that's gonna play out once you know you know this show comes back in the spring. And another thing that happens: Star finds Iyana. Iyana is broken because she has just been disowned from her father. She has also lost her place. You know, in Midtown, she's sitting with a damn gun in it and got a damn drink. You know, Star comes up in the place and it's like, won't you pull the trigger? It make a good, it make great headlines. You know, it'll definitely help put Midtown on the map. Or do you want better? She grabs the damn gun like, I'll take your ass out. It'll probably be, be even better. And Iyan was like, do it. Go ahead and do it. I don't care. Kill me. But, part, but but honestly, I, I don't think you got the guts to pull that trigger. And she stood there and held that trigger for a minute. Carlotta finds her and stops her. And she says, Carlotta, she's like, Star, you have worked too damn hard to get to where you are. And you have done too much to let this bitch ruin it for you. This bitch ain't fucking worth it. And if anything, you killing her, you be giving her exactly what she wants. So don't. Let's put this damn gun down and get the hell up out of here. So she stops Star from shooting Iyana because Iyana is done. As I say, you can put a fork in the bitch. She's well done. Done. So they actually, you know, um, by the time they get home, they see that the, that the salon and the house, the, the place is on fire. And, you know, Cotton, you know, um, Carlotta can't get a hold of Cotton. So we don't know if Cotton's still in the building. We know that Karen is still there. And we also see that, um, you know, um, Angel goes to um, Hyle's uh, camper and sees that damn Hyle is strung out on a co is, is pretty much knocked out from a cocaine overdose. So we see that going on. And, but the question is, so pretty much, the, the house is on fire, both, um, we see that all of them come in, um, you know, Star, um, Simone, and, um, and, um, Carlotta, and Simone goes into the house trying to find Karen, Carlotta goes after her, and that's what caused her to inhale a lot of smoke when she passed out, and that's what ended her in the hospital. So the detective is, you know, so it pretty much now goes back to, the, to her being in the hospital. They're pretty much reading. So we, we don't know who, so I'm going to get to that, I'm sorry. So pretty much, you know, he, the cop was about to tell her some more details about the case, but Maurice is like, no, let me tell her. And she's kind of sticking up like, so what happened? She said that um, one thing we find out, the fire was arson. So someone intentionally set the fire. Who will probably find out when the show comes back. But we also find out that somebody was, that, that somebody died in that house. The question is who? Omari, Karen, Cotton, Simone. We are going to have to wait until the spring to find out who was that dead body and who was behind burning Carlotta's house. Because also, Miss Bruce can be a part of it. Remember, Miss Bruce was burnt 
after Carlotta fired her. And we know Miss Bruce ain't the type of bitch that's going to take nothing lying down. So we have to check that out too. But uh, that's what I have, y'all. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. But um, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow me on my other social platforms, Facebook, Twitter, um, Snapchat, um, Instagram. Um, also, um, you know, uh, LinkedIn. And also, you can also check out my GoFundMe link in the um, description box as well. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I will be back with the spring with the spring premiere star. So until then, everybody, take care.